Look, I, I have been beyond extremely fortunate. I certainly uh, put the work in, uh, believed in, in the things that I, that I backed and started. Um, but anybody that's able to get through those waters that doesn't understand that there's a lot of luck involved isn't being intellectually honest. So, you know, but it's uh, every day I, I, I'm stare at my life and understand how, how fortunate I am. Well, that's good to hear. And listen, it's more than a feel good story, though, because you learned a lot doing the old school industry thing, which is kind of part of your thing anyway, taking new information, AI, big data to industries like laundromats to insurance. What is it about that that you find you can change inside of a company? And how do you locate the companies that you want to invest in now? Well, at Tolco, our thesis, we're a holding company. And the thesis was to find uh, industries and then companies and management teams within those industries that didn't normally have either access or the wherewithal uh, to employ cutting edge technologies that would enhance their business. So the idea was to not only bring the capital and hopefully some business acumen, but also we had Tulco Labs with a bunch of AI and data scientists and practitioners that we would be able uh, to, to bring to these companies. And, you know, so far it's, it's worked well. And, um, you know, I think every corner of our economy over the next seven to 10 years is going to be uh, touched in many ways uh, by technology. Well, you've got Figs, which is going after hospital gowns, trying to spruce them up a little bit. You've got, we mentioned, you know, Acrisure, Insurance, Roadrunner, Waste Management. Is part of your search, you know, we're trying to understand your thinking to find industries that are not only kind of ignored because they're not, maybe not sexy or they're older line, but also that maybe have one or two well-ingrained, massive players who, who move slowly and they don't think about change. Well... Look, we, we, try to, we try to be thoughtful about the size of the industry, the opportunity itself. You have to find great management teams that will embrace the pivot to technology. Certainly in the case of FIGS, uh, they were a young company at the time started by these two brilliant women. Um, and our job there was just to sort of be of any assistance that we could. They did an amazing job building out the company. And then on the insurance sector, we looked at a lot of insure tech companies uh, that you know, are pretty narrow cast in what they do. And our thought was, especially on the brokerage side, if we could bring true artificial intelligence and data science uh, that, that you could really outperform and enhance your returns. We found a great partner in Greg Williams and Akashur, uh, and I'm very pleased with the results thus far. Yeah, and you're also involved in trying to bring back manufacturing to the United States. And I want to pivot to that, Thomas, because I know you're from outside of Binghamton, New York, and I spend some time in upstate New York. And, and I say this with absolute respect and affection for all the good people I've met up there. When you drive through it, uh, Route 17, in either direction, there's a lot of empty factories. There's a lot of lost promises, a lot of lost jobs, not just there, but across America where you're from. You're invested in something called Rebuild, trying to use big data again to help bring back manufacturing and manufacturing jobs to America. Talk to us about that. And is there anything out there that will work aside from the cost? I mean, that's the, we, I say it's the high cost of cheap because we want to make stuff in, around the world, but guess what? To buy it inexpensively, that means you're going to lay off an American. How are we going to fix manufacturing? Well, look, uh, a couple of years ago, Jeff Wilkie, uh, who's an outstanding executive, former president of, of uh, Amazon, and I started talking about this. Uh, he, he went to MIT, had a great group of uh, classmates that he stayed in touch with who became experts in high-tech manufacturing. And one of the things that we spoke about is that, uh, and this was before COVID, and certainly COVID has, has put a very big spotlight on our vulnerabilities along the lines of supply chain uh, and, and leaving our uh, our prosperity and our ability to compete in the hands of foreign actors, and many of which are, are not uh, are hostile to us. So the idea of taking high tech manufacturing, bringing it back here to the United States, putting a lot of money behind it, which is the idea behind rebuild, uh, especially with mid sized companies to give them access to capital, to give them access uh, to the kind of uh, cutting edge technologies and, and enhancements that allow them to compete. And I would ask 
that w- when you look at the offshoring of jobs over the last 30 years in manufacturing, I-, I would argue that it's much more expensive now in the vulnerable place that we find ourselves. So the idea is learn to manufacture. That's what built this country yeah. up. I'm a huge believer uh, in America and our resiliency, but I think right now is a very, very important time in our history. It, it, you, you couldn't be more right. And, and you know, there are millions of, of younger people, particularly young men, maybe late teens, early 20s, that are choosing not to go to college. College costs have gotten out of control, as we know. For whatever reason, they're deciding to not do it. They need a career. And if there's no manufacturing there, you wonder what that business is going to be like down the road for them. I mean, without being TV hyperbole, you're not just talking about manufacturing and jobs. It seems like you're talking about a potential lost generation of American males unless we do something. Yeah, certainly, the, you know, uh, I'm on some university boards and the applications coming in from, from men has dropped a great deal. Um, and you don't want to read too much into this, but when you look at the fundamentals of societies and countries that are destabilized, undereducated young men is, is a running theme. So I think here we have an opportunity to pivot into the next wave of the economy, but that's going to involve training, opportunities, digital fluency. And one of the things that we're excited about at Rebuild is to provide uh, training so that young men, women, everybody has an opportunity to get a job that has a a long life to it and, and good pay. Yeah, it's well said. And, you know, talk to us quickly. You mentioned it a bit about China. This, you know, China, and obviously I know that you'd sold part of your company to them years ago, but it's a different China now under President Xi Jinping. Some of the things that have gone on there in the last 18 months have been eye-opening for the world as well. We're in a position now in America and Europe where we rely completely on China for almost all of our manufacturing, and Europe now relies on Russia for so much of its just basic power needs. How did we get into this position where we're, we're trapped, we're stuck? Well, look, um, for those of us and and anybody that's been paying attention to China over the past five years under his leadership, things have certainly shifted. Uh, They've become much more aggressive. It is very clear what their intentions are in in terms of uh, their position in the world and how they want to extend their power Mm -hmm. and domination. And I think there's a lot of things in this country right now that are fractured. Uh, I'd like to see the United States become united again and recognize that they present a very clear and present danger uh, from from the way I look at it, economically, militarily, uh, culturally. um, And I think their ideals and what they're projecting um, is does not really fit with uh, with with the idea of democracy and free speech, things of that nature. So I I really think it's time uh, for our uh, economy. Uh, the leaders in our government and so forth to look at this very clearly and to act with urgency, or we're going to find ourselves in a very bad position. Well, what can we do about it? Can we, you're obviously doing it in the private sector through rebuild. Is there something governmentally, regulatorily that we can do? The tariffs don't seem to be working at all. Trump tariffs are still on. China's sending us more goods than ever. Is there anything we can do to help, quote, encourage American companies to start making stuff here again? Well, I I think, first of all, you have to look at policies that are not just written on white papers and sound good, but that that are going to work. You have to provide incentives uh, uh, to companies to to stay here. And lastly, I think we have to be sober minded uh, in America about what their intentions are. Sometimes the very first uh, uh, step is to identify the problem and identify what exactly it is that, that you can do. And we need to be self-reliant. That, that to me, is, is very important. Now, certainly you want to leave diplomatic channels open. You want to be thoughtful. But I think the United States and its global partners need to recognize uh, that, that China is on the rise. And, you know, I, I don't think uh, its intentions are, are friendly towards us. Yeah, and maybe where you are sitting right now in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, is, is a great model. Pittsburgh, obviously an industrial city that has managed spectacularly to transform itself into a, an AI and a robotics with Carnegie Mellon and everything else. Really, maybe that's going to be a model for the rest of the country. Thomas Tull, we certainly appreciate all your time today on CNBC, broad-ranging topics. 
I'd appreciate your views. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.